For those who are unaware, I live in the countryside, and living in the countryside means that I have to deal with the horror, uh, which is DSL Internet. To those who are unaware of that, uh, ADSL in particular is basically a technology designed to squeeze more life out of cheap old copper telephone wires, and it's been a cheap thing from the start, and even now in its... Uh, third generation ADSL 2 Plus, it's a cheap and horrible thing which is never going to be very good at anything at all. And as a result of that, uh, basically any modem you're going to get is going to be a cheap piece of crap. Uh, this is one of the uh, modems you get from my ISP, which uh, has a reasonable performance, it does about as good as you could expect a, an ADSL 2 modem to do. But it's got some very wonky design decisions. For instance, the mostly regarding the power supply. This is one of the original power adapters you get with them. 15 volts AC, 700 milliamps. Transformer based. Weighs a ton. Very inefficient. And that feeds into an internal rectifier a heap of giant caps which always go bad uh, followed by one switching regulator and uh, then a whole bunch of linear ones and as a function of that the power efficiency of these modems is basically nil and I don't like wasting energy so at the moment I'm running one of these it's a, an ASUS branded modem by the way you can see the logo on the sticker there I think it's rebranded as a Paradigm or Zone or whatever the brand of a week might be. And uh, I've been running one of these uh, off of the internal power supply of my server, which is on 24-7. And that uh, brings the efficiency up quite a bit, since uh, I can bypass the rectifier and I don't have to run a, an extra transformer-based power supply. But... Uh, these things still use 5 to 8 watts of power and that's for something which doesn't even have internal wireless uh, connectivity and that's pretty horrid and I don't feel like spending money on a newer modem since I'm not going to be able to get any more ADSL performance out of it it would be a pure cost uh, energy consumption thing to buy a new one and while I'm never going to regain that money since Money-wise, it's, you know, not a huge deal of 5 to 10 watts. But I do have quite a few of these, since uh, they always fail with these caps, people throw them away, and uh, I pick them out of the trash and put them to good use. So I figured I'd actually do it properly with this one, since I'm, I'm using my server as a power supply, which has, uh, you know, a proper 12-watt rail to power this thing off that I would uh, modify to basically run as efficiently as possible. Now, the biggest issue with this thing uh, is the ADSL modem part, because this entire thing basically on my server runs on 24 volts, it runs on the plus, mi plus minus 12 volts you can get out of a power supply. But the ADSL part is uh, powered by a linear 12 volt regulator. And that's a rather inefficient uh, part of a modem, although the main processor isn't really <laughs> a miracle of efficiency, to say the least. But uh, the loss you get uh, just in this little tiny regulator is huge. This entire part of the PCB is uh, basically running red hot all the time. And that's entirely pointless, since I have the opportunity to run it straight off of 12 volts. And uh, I have done a bit of checking, and the other uh, voltage rails are just 3.3 uh, volts, 1.8 volts, and uh, 1.2 volts. And uh, the 3.3 and 1.8 volt rails are generated by this dual switching converter here, and then the 1.8 and 1.2 volt rails, or 2.5 and 1.2 volt rails are generated linearly from the 3.3 volt rail and that, that's not a huge loss you can see the there's just no cooling 
uh, ability of these ICs, so that's not a big deal. But I think I can cut probably a few watts of power consumption by just modifying this thing in order to run uh, properly straight off of 12 volts. So, that's what I'm gonna do. I'll start with just uh, replacing all these rundown, bulging uh, TPO caps with something more useful. And I'm also going to use less stupid values because we've got, you know, 63 volts caps on the 1.8 volt rail and uh, 10 volt caps on the 1 point something volt rails and so forth. And to be just a bit scientific, I did measure the idle power consumption of uh, one of these modems at a pretty typical supply voltage and sitting idle with no ADSL link or Ethernet or anything going on, it was using about 5 watts. Now that's going to rise dramatically when you actually allow it to do ADSL, but I'm not going to disconnect my internet to just in order to measure that. But I think we're going to be able to drop this uh, a fair bit just by reducing the quiescent uh, consumption. And there we go, the hardware modifications are basically complete. You've got the modified and uh, recapped modem on the right and uh, a an exploded, unmodified unit to the left. And as you can see, I've bypassed the rectifier bridge there, and uh, this little linear 12 volt regulator is nowhere to be found, having been replaced by just a solder bridge across two of the pads. Uh, since this thing is going to run on, you know, pure filtered 12 volts through coming straight out of the computer power supply, I've also omitted a few of these uh, big filtering caps since. Uh, these, uh, basically, their job uh, would be to rectify the 50 hertz rectified main frequency stuff coming in and well, there's just going to be pre-filtered stuff coming in now, so uh, I think these two caps are going to be the only ones straight across the 12 volt uh, rail and I think that's going to be uh, plenty good enough. So, all we've got left to do is to hook this thing up and see if we can actually spot any difference in power consumption. All of the magic smoke out, who knows. And just as a side note, these modems are notoriously difficult to solder because for some very weird reason beyond me, uh, ASUS have done this weird thing with a ground plane where instead of, you know, using this little uh, standoffs where like uh, most products with uh, strong ground planes have little uh, thinnings of the ground plane around the uh, solder joints in order to make soldering easier but instead of doing that ASUS have just uh, ignored that entirely just attached the pad straight to the ground plane and they've also around every single uh, ground solder point almost they've via stitched it to an upper ground plane as well so, even though I've got a 72 watt uh, iron, uh, I, I need to preheat these boards to about 100 degrees prior to being able to solder them at all, else you'll just not be able to get it to flow. And I just can't fathom why they've done this. I mean, <laughs> it's, it, it doesn't cost them anything to do it properly, but I suppose they didn't want people recapping them. Hmm. Alright, here comes the moment of truth. I've verified the polarity, I've set my power supply to 12 volts DC. So let's turn it on and see what happens. And we do indeed have LEDs. Our smoke level seems to be mostly normal. And most importantly, the power consumption has basically gotten cut in half. That's a very nice surprise. Now I've just got to figure out to see if this thing is actually going to work connecting to both computers over Ethernet and to ADSL. And we do get an Ethernet connectivity light, so is it going to respond when we try to access it? Moment of truth. That seems to be working admirably. So now all we've got to do is to actually bring this thing upstairs, call the internet connection for everyone, and see if we can get internet through it.
prior to doing any internet testing I actually had to populate these two caps here which weren't uh, actually populated in the original uh, ASUS design although there are obviously spots for them you know, because uh, it was making quite a bit of more of a screechy noise from the switching voltage regulator than I liked and uh, that is probably due to the fact that I replaced these two caps with one, one phase in my caps which were originally 1500 but uh, in this configuration with these two caps added, even though this is just a 330 mic it's uh, quieter than I've ever heard one of these be before so I think we're doing good and I'm also going to add a little heatsink to this main processor because it's been on for about a minute or two and yeah it's running about 50 degrees already they usually get up to about 70 in normal operation so better safe than sorry and of course I always like to have an excuse for soldering on uh, big hunks of copper Then you can go to the internet. And after not forgetting to rewire this thing to 12 volts, let's go use again. And we do seem to be getting a DSL light. Let me just verify that this pizza can, then it will be good to go for hopefully another few years. And we are indeed getting the amazing full 1.3 megabit upload rate and 18 megabit download rate that this phone line seems to be capable of. Curiously, these uh, performance reports tend to be very similar, we, even if you use different modems with different uh, ADSL front ends. But uh, most importantly, we are saving 6 to... I've seen up to 9 watts of power uh, on the entire server system which is indeed more than I dared to hope for and normally this server would never ever go below 65 watts and now it's idling quite steadily at uh, just around 57 was the lowest I saw to 60s, low 60s so that's a very, very good result in my mind. I mean, especially given the fact that we only saw about one watt of power decrease in the actual modem. But the thing is, since it's been running previously, or the other one, it's been running off of the negative 12 volt rail on the power supply, that's a huge hit to the efficiency, since uh, the power supply, while it is 80 plus uh, rated, I think the regulator for the negative 12 volts rail is actually linear. So the more load you put on it, the less efficient it's going to be. And well, with this thing drawing probably closer to 300 milliamps, that's a relatively big efficiency hit. So this is certainly going to be a worthwhile effort. I've just got to get away from my horrible 7200 RPM drives in this thing. I finally caught it. I'm not lying, oh, 56 watts. Oh, there we go. That's quite a aesthetic upgrade, too. Although, you could say that we did lose a bit of the post apocalyptic capital of this setup. But I'm probably just going to do the same hack to this thing and uh, have it just as a drop in spare, since I'll have to modify all of these, <laughs> you know, as fun detector and so forth. Because, yeah, my period plug is just 12 volts now. Anyway, I hope you found this enlightening. Yeah, saved almost 7 watts of our continuous power use in the house. Thank you for watching. Cheerio. Man, this has to be one of the ugliest computer modems ever spawned by mankind.